Good evening. For the next period of time, we're going to have a Miss Man ceremony, and I'll, I'll have some things to say uh, to enable us to remember those who uh, were once a part of us in physical form, I guess you could say, but certainly are, are with us in our hearts um, in, in a variety of ways. Um, just, it, it, it's not really a chapel service, but almost, okay, so if you were, hey, that's, that, that's what's going on. All right, I love it, okay. It's been a while since I've heard something say, you know, when I've been up in the pulpit. But anyway, <laughs> Psalm 23 is the uh, first uh, text I want to read to you. Uh, for me, as a chaplain, uh, Psalm 23 became much more uh, important because of our experience downrange. Uh, and, and whenever I would uh, be a part of a memorial service for soldiers, even more so, it was something that was important to me because it seems like we've always taken some kind of solace out of that particular psalm because it speaks so much of God's provision for us and our response to Him and how He really does care for us and wants the best for us. So let me read to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in my paths. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A soldier seemingly abandoned by his family. A soldier in the midst of his fear shooting himself in the ankle. Soldiers making deals with God. Soldiers willing to endure hardship for the mission. Soldiers believing they have done their part. Soldiers believing they have done good. We all had a variety of ways of looking at our situation as we prepared and as we went downrange. We often understood the political and national views of our efforts. We knew something about our enemies, the committed, the fanatics, and the forced. We were to be professional no matter what came our way. I remember Colonel Faircloth not wanting any derogatory terms to be used of the Iraqis. He and I had a conversation about that, and one of the things that I was concerned about was no one would get PTS as a result of what we'd experienced. As a chaplain, I brought something of the eternal to our situation. I had many conversations before and after the war about religious faith. As I brought chapel services to the batteries and to the guns, I made it a point to talk about how the desert focuses a man's attention on what's really, really important. When we prayed, it was for us and for our mission our loved ones back home, and for the poor smugs across the line. We had an awareness that many were there out of fear for their own families. Maybe our prayers worked. They surrendered in numbers that really, really surprised us. In my visits, I saw the professionalism that Colonel Farrakhoth wanted. I saw soldiers rise to the occasion. I saw soldiers who cared for the comrades. After all was said and done, we did what was expected of us. We passed through the shadow of death. We were able to eat in the presence of our enemies. We were able to enjoy the blessings of our country. And we were able to continue to make a difference in whatever sphere of influence we had. As I look at you, I see soldiers and family members, and especially you unbelievable wives, who are shining examples of what is right about our country. I am glad that I served with you. Now let's pray. 
Lord, you know our hearts, you know our sorrows and joys, and yet we know your faithfulness. We have experienced various degrees of hardship. They have formed who we are, and in the midst of that, you have led us, encouraged us, given us what we need. Thank you. It is traditional to hold a ceremony remembering those who did not return, remembering those missing in action. In our case, all returned from battle. However, life has its joys and its sorrows. Over the past 27 years, we have lost seven individuals who were part of the 3rd and 20th mission. This evening, we honored those missing in action, and yet we remember those unable to be with us because of death. As you hear the words, remember those friends, those soldiers, those willing to serve, remember. Noel Baum, Roger Brown, Sandy Denson Jr., Ricky Sims, Greg Kiprios, Christopher Williams, and Walden Matisse. The table that stands before you is a place of honor. In the setting of this table, we acknowledge those missing from our celebration tonight, and we remember them. The table is small and set for one, symbolizing the vulnerability of a lone prisoner against his captors. Remember. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing purity of intention in responding to the nation's call to arms. Remember. The wine glass is inverted. They cannot taste toast with us tonight. Remember. The slices of lemon remind us of their bitter suffering. Remember. The grains of salt representing the countless tears of the families. Remember. The single red rose reminding us of loved ones who kept the faith waiting their return. Remember. The burning candle and the yellow ribbon symbolizing everlasting hope of a reunion with the missing. Remember. The chair is empty, for they are not here. Remember. Remember all who have served alongside them and called them comrades, who have donned the same proud uniform, being sworn to the same faith and allegiance. We will never forget their sacrifice. Remember. We will be grateful and remember them. Let's pray. Lord, may we always remember our friends, our lost ones, and our experiences of being part of the 2nd of the 75th and of the 3rd of the 20th. As the years continue, may we pass on our lessons learned and our devotion to duty and not reward. May the meal we enjoy together symbolize our love for each other and the best of who we are. Bless us, O Lord. Amen. Amen.